There have been some monumental challenges across the channels in recent weeks. Uh, Global Triathlon Network have just come back from the Norsemen. Uh, GCN have done uh, how many kilometers can you do in 24 hours? And of course, on GMBN last week, Henry uh, did a Everest challenge, which was 27,000 feet. Yeah. However, I've just come back from the Tour de Mont Blanc, and I think it's the hardest thing I've ever done on a mountain bike. So on today's show, we're going to be looking at and discussing what is the toughest sport on two wheels. Yeah, some of the challenges in the office are just the colleagues, never mind the actual <laughs> things we do on bikes. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so Henry's ridden 9,000 meters of elevation. That video is coming in a few weeks, actually, but pretty impressive. He's done that a few times, Henry has. Is that possible on an e-bike? Well, it's gotta be. What, 27,000 feet? Yeah, in a day. Yeah, easily. I mean, you can you can do whatever you want in a day if you've got the uh, the mindset. I mean, Come on then, Mont Tour de Mont Blanc. That's a famously big hill. <laughs> it's an iconic hill, and so basically I've just done a three-day event around it, which was uh, Verbier to Comoir, Comoir to Chamonix, Chamonix back to Verbier, 350 kilometers, 16,000 meters of ascent, and 18,000 meters of descent. Three countries. And uh, some very famous towns for alpine, yeah. well, everything. Some of the best, world's best climbing, yeah. uh, snowboarding, skiing, mountain biking, and I would imagine pretty gnarly places to ride your bike. This is it. Now, this is it. When we're talking about what's the toughest sport, I mean, when we did the Tour de Mont Blanc, it's not just climbing smooth fire roads or tarmac roads. You're climbing technical single track for hours and hours on end. And when you're trying to get the bike over those rocks, get up the climbs, and you're wrestling with the bike, that is as challenging as riding downhill tracks. And the downhill tracks there was like single track, rocky, rooty. Obviously, it's high altitude. Some of the tracks were 10,000 feet. So... It was actually quite demanding. It must have been pretty tough on the bikes as well. Did you have any mechanicals along the way? Come on, Don. <laughs> you yes, know me you better did. than that. How many mechs did you snap off? Uh, I was actually worried about the mechs. I did take a few spare mechs. Uh, lots, lots of things went wrong. I mean, it, that was the same with all the teams. And you know, you put when you put in a bike through uh, 350k of technical terrain, then there's obviously going to be problems, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's totally tough on them. And you're going to be tired. I mean, that's half the challenge sometimes is when you're tired, you're trying to ride technical things. That's when punctures happen. Yeah. And worse. Yeah. Um, but the question is, Don, what is the toughest sport? Um, and how do you measure it? What What is your definition of tough? Is yeah. it, is it, is it is it the your heart rate? Is it how is it distance? Is it altitude? Is it technicality? How, well, I mean, how do you... thing, things like Henry have just done this. That's a really physical thing to do, but also it, the climbing and the descending is going to be really hard. On GCN, they covered a guy uh, on a velodrome trying to ride 950 <laughs> miles. 950k, K. actually. Okay. Can you imagine 950k? In a day, in a day. <laughs> on a velodrome, just going round and round. <laughs> I mean, I've done some big cross-country races. I did one that's uh, 110k and three and a half thousand meters in a day. Mm -hmm. But then I think the hardest things I've done have been like the multi-day stage races, like the enduro races, like yeah. Andes Pacifico, yeah. where you will ride in really gnarly terrain day mm -hmm. after day after day, yeah. and those things just accumulate. Exactly, and, and that's pretty much what the Tour de Mont Blanc was. You know, yeah. you're doing 6,000 meters a day and 100k's, but... Um, yeah, I mean, the Andes Pacific was a classic example. And, and the Tour de Mont Blanc was actually quite similar to the Andes Pacific. Right. Uh, last time I did that, actually, was with a camera backpack. <laughs> but it's the other things, it's the heat as well. And it's the unknown. You know, you're going into terrain which which you don't know, and you're going to make things up as you go along. And it's quite taxing mentally, isn't it's it? It's something that I could see working really well for the future of e-bike uh, events, where you you go somewhere as a tourist and you get to go you know, ride into these incredible mm -hmm. remote places. Yeah. I mean, the racing, for me, doesn't necessarily need to be a part of it. It's the, the adventure, but yeah. I can imagine doing some of these three-day events mm. around the world on yeah. an e-bike and getting to ride some amazing things. Well, apparently that could be the plan. Um, so Free Ride World Tour, the organisers of the uh, the e-bike festival and the Tour de Mont Blanc, um, I had a chat with uh, the founder of that event and he, say, he says he can see a day where that happens. And I think when the non-e-bikers get wind of the terrain we were riding out in uh, Switzerland, France and Italy, 
I think they're gonna be thinking, mm, yeah, I want a bit of, I want a bit of that action because And we really are at the start of e-bike racing. We've seen it a little bit. We I personally know that there's, mm. there's something coming, there's another series coming next year. Ooh, but also right, um Don ahead of the curve. Did you uh, <laughs> see the FIM event that took place at the weekend? I didn't. I was so too busy. <laughs> it was uh it's made by the same people who make the FIM World Motocross mm -hmm. uh, TV. Yeah. So you've got Paul Mallon doing the commentary. Right. Okay. And guys whizzing around a motor is literally a motocross track on right. e-bikes and I, I watched two minutes of it cringed that, the whole way through is that a bit dull and there was there was all sorts of bikes there were throttle bikes there were pedal assist bikes no, no, no. it was it was it looked to me like a complete mess and that is FIM which is a, a motorbike yeah. uh, organisation for, for me I think it's the big mountain adventures and I think you got a good point there Don it's not about the racing it's about it's about the adventure and actually just getting round an event like the Tour de Mont Blanc was tough enough uh but let's get back to what's the toughest. Now, now Henry just did the Everest challenge, which, which was 9,000 meters. But to do that, he actually had to go by the rule book and do the same track 82 times. That's like riding around the velodrome, really, isn't it? It's not, I, it's tough. Obviously, it's gonna to be tough mentally, physically, and tough on your, on your, on your budget. On, that's it. Sorry. Do you know what? That was the toughest thing of last week. Is that I could deal. I could deal with the event in terms of my arms and and my legs. And yeah, the heart rate was you know was going through the roof at at, at uh, many points. But it's your ass. <laughs> yeah. And I think I think there's a lot of room for development in seats and chamois. <laughs> to, honestly, my ass was like in bits. Oh dear. You must have been there, though, right? Well, good set of chamois. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, definitely. I've got a pair of Aslos and a pair of Rafa chamois, and they make yeah. the world difference for big days, eh? Right? Yeah. But I wonder what you guys think is. What's your definition of tough? Is it you know? Is it technicality? Is it physicality? Mm. Let's know. But uh, I had a chat with uh, Olympic gold medalist Christoph Souser, who was second in the Tour de Mont Blanc, and I asked him how tough he thought this event was. For me, e-bike racing is is harder um, than than on a regular bike because you're so busy. Uh, you you just also fast, so fast uphill, uh, fast in the in the trails which are flat. The engine supports you, and it's also very technical. And you know, like you come sometimes with too much speed going over a rock, and you have to look that you keep the balance and. You know, when you when you pedal, you push as hard as with a with a regular bike. So. This week, Giant launched their new Rain e-bike uh, with the Yamaha motor, which has been tweaked to give more support at that higher cadences. Uh, 27.5 wheels uh, and, of course, uh, a range of sizes and specs, starting from 4,799 euros up to 7,499 euros. Saw one in the Giant factory off-road uh, uh, pits, actually, in Whistler. There's a really? couple of them knocking around. Well, one yeah. of the new ones? Yeah, a couple of them, yeah. Crikey. Definitely a good-looking bike. I saw their new Rain 29 as well, but I definitely think the e-bike, it looks fairly chunky, I'd say. It's all mm. integrated, the battery now. Yeah, but yeah. Um, big but, hit bike. Yeah, but it's available in either a 500 watt hour or a 625 watt hour. But the big news here is it's a 150 watt hour bolt-on kit which you can get on top of it as well. Uh, also news this week is that German brand Cube have got their new range of e-mountain bikes. 120 mil, 140 mil and 160 mil travel. Uh, but for Cube, the, the big news here is that they've now got a carbon 160 mil travel bike as well. Cube, definitely a big player in the e-bike scene in Europe. They've been selling mm -hmm. a lot of bikes, but actually you go to resorts and see a lot of those cubes. Yeah. What was interesting, Don, you, you mentioned you just came back from Whistler. Yeah. And you said not so long ago you were in Squamish and you saw a huge um, range of e-mountain bikes. There was a person on the side of the, of the trails renting yeah. e-mountain bikes out. Yeah, it was one of the local guys had a fleet of giant e-bikes that was popular. But in Whistler... Different thing altogether. No, well, we saw obviously in the bike park, it's all ski lift assisted with chair lift, so I didn't see any bikes there. But however, up shooting on Blackcomb, there's Dark Crystal, and there's a couple of really big descents. The dark Crystal. Um, there's a few microclimate, and there were e-bikes zipping up there all day long in the heat of the day, doing mm -hmm. a it's way over a thousand meter climb, mm -hmm. and then bombing down that fresh Alpine trail. Great. I bet you're looking forward to getting back on an e-bike, aren't you? Yeah, I need to do it this weekend. 
Now we're running hot and cold on the climb of the week this week. Actually, one of the climbs is not a climb at all, it's a river crossing. The first of all, out in sunny Mallorca, or was it Menorca? Menorca. Well? Menorca. We've got Matty, who's taken his nephews out on a new mountain bike experience. Nice little climb there. Super hot and dry up into Menorca. Super yeah. rocky as well, lots of that sort of lava rock. Yeah. That's cool, isn't it? And on a, yes, exa exactly, on a cooler level, we've got uh, Justin, who looks like... Look at this, the water's pretty that fast. That is here. raging. It looks mid Wales, but it could equally be the Lake District, but I think those are mid Wales rocks, but this is not to be... Uh... I'd get dunked. Oh, my God. I mean, he's wet. Fair dues, fair dues. That is a great river crossing. He did that well, actually. Yeah. So keep sending in your river crossings, your climbs and your descents, and we'll get them on the channel. Right, in the comments, uh, Craig Ricker has got a really interesting comment. Now, I'm not sure I totally agree with, but mm -hmm. he's talking about uh, the software that drives the motors will improve greatly as better use of sensors is paired to higher powered CPUs that can better understand the terrain and the rider. Yeah, that's always going to improve, definitely. Um, but also the code lines written to make use of them in more subtle mm -hmm. ways. Yeah. Just like the ECU of a car is always able to self-learn the driver's style and adapt its maps. So e-bike e ECU, ECUs will do the same. Ghosting modes will come into play where a previously ridden trail, such as GPS motor and mode selection output, will all be used to almost automatically allow the bike motor to be the most effective mode. Yeah. I don't know about that. This is now in relation to the video we had on the future of e-mountain bike, uh, e-mountain bike last week. Uh, it's a good point, Don. It's a good point. It's can, all about the software. So I mean, cars do that. They'll learn how fast you're putting the throttle down and it will adjust those sort of things. But I don't see it working with GPS because one day you want to ride mellow on that same trail the next time. You want to ride it harder. So I think yeah. it should come down, like with cars, it's to your sort of your most recent like behaviour on that one mm -hmm. drive. It will yeah. it'll adjust the throttle and stuff like that. Yeah. So should it do it to the drive and not to the GPS, yeah. I believe. But... I th yeah, I, can see, I can see that because ultimately what happens with e-bike motors, you'll have, you know, we're currently running between 60 and 120 newton meters of torque. But ultimately, there comes a point on a slippy, slippery climb or a rooty climb or one where there's simply a rock on it where the rider themselves need to understand how the motor works. Mm. It's not the other way around. We've, we've seen like electronics on suspension of mountain bikes, didn't we, on the Lapierre? I it's mean, not really taken off ago. though, to be fair. It didn't at all because I, I don't actually like to have a third, par third party interfering with how I yeah. ride my bike. Same. I'm exactly the same, and that's what. Uh, well, we're agreed on something. So with the Lapierre, it was whatever your fork does, your shock will adjust to it. Wasn't into it whatsoever. And I was thinking, well, what if I want to do a backflip? <laughs> What's the fork going to tell the shock if I want to do that? It's going to tell it the wrong thing. Can you do a backflip? Oh, I have done a backflip in the past. <laughs> uh, um, whereas, you know, like the Bosch e-bike mode where it's more based on the torque. MTB, yeah, that's yeah. the thing where I find it's probably going to improve more. Mm -hmm. Those more subtle sort of yeah. changes of the motor and sensors will inform that, not necessarily the bike telling you what to do. Yeah, and I think it's such things as like, you know, how much how much range have you got left from your battery? Yeah. But the, this whole business relies on rider skill. It depends on rider weight. Depends on the type of bike, depends on your tyres. I mean, there's so many variables involved in it. Uh, this next comment's for you, Don. This is from, uh, I can't read it because my eyes are so tired. Once, what does it say? Uh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam. Uh, the future of EMTB is 40 kilometres an hour. You heard it here first. Well, that's a bit fast, maybe. What's that, miles per hour? 33, 30. maybe. It's pretty quick. Yeah. Uh, and still on the subject of the future of e-mountain bikes, uh, and during the discussion with Marco Sondreger from Specialized, uh, I asked Marco, do you think people should wait for new technology or should they just go and buy their e-mountain e e bike right now to go and get some experiences and have a good time? Yeah. So Jim861 says, uh, waiting for an e-bike, if you don't already have one, is not the best thing to do. Since getting my e-bike, I'm riding 70% more and doing a thousand kilometers per month. If I had waited three months for a specific bike, that's 3,000 kilometers of fun, learning and improvement I would have missed out on. Definitely not not worth waiting for. And there's there's always going to be that case of waiting a year for the mm -hmm. next bit, next thing coming out. So yeah, just buy yeah. the thing. I mean, we've talked about it with phones, haven't we? We're just over it now. Yeah, just right. Get get on with it and get out there and have a good time. Uh, but thanks for your comments on the future of e-mountain biking and keep them coming because I think it's a discussion that we'll keep having here on EMBN. 
So it's time for Where in the World, uh, some great Where in the Worlds this week. This is from Alex, who's on his Merida in uh, Harcourt, Victoria, Australia. And then we've got Karina, who's out in uh, Crested Butte. Oh, what's that? Cool Have you thought. been to Crested Butte? Uh, I've not. That's where um, Chris Opie's just been for oh, really? GMBN Rock. Well, Leadville. Led the Leadville. I think that's around there. I may be wrong. It's definitely Colorado. I think I'd rather have an e-bike on the Leadville. <laughs> Uh, and then moving somewhere close to home, we've got Ooh. Andy here and uh, a pair of Turbo Levos and the Needles in the Isle of Wight. Nice. Flake Sampson territory. He is, yeah. Mm. And he does some cross country rides over. There's a two. It's a mm. race from end to end, isn't there? You've been to Isle of Wight? I have not. Mm. Me neither. Now, coming up on the channel this week, we've got all the news from Verbia E-Bike Festival, which took place last weekend out in Verbia, obviously. Uh, what goes on there, then, Steve? Uh, lots of stuff, actually. So, on the Saturday and Sunday was the festival itself. So, we're talking 30 different brands with a 1,000 bikes. Whoa. And you can go and test ride any of those bikes from any of the brands. You simply buy a ticket for 15 euros. You get your lift pass. You get your pass to every, everything around right. the area. And it's from everything, from beginners to intermediate up to expert level. So you can either go on Waymark trails and go and ride wherever you want. You can take on a guided tour of different abilities, as again, you know, from beginner up to expert level. Or you can go and do a enduro race. So you can either go 33Ks, 66Ks or 100Ks. And actually, Remy Absalon won one of those races. Nice. So that's part of the festival. There's also a food tour, which <laughs> you, can, you can sample all the... Um, local foods and wine, which I think I think costs like 75 euros, but you've got five different food stops. You've obviously got your e-bike rental in that as well. And that's one of my regrets, actually. I that sounds gone, pretty good. I should have gone and done that. Have a wine flight with your ride. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want a wine colored ship, by the way. Oh, yeah, uh, and the other thing was the Tour de Mont Blanc, which actually happened from the Wednesday to the Friday. So um, thousands of people there riding e-bikes. Except Chris Smith. Except Christmas, who was unfortunately taken ill oh, on the Tuesday, so he couldn't it. do the tour. Uh, but he actually was seen later in the week hitting some of the bigger jumps in the bike park. Mm, nice. uh, and then on Sunday, we've actually got that race, the Tour de Mont Blanc. So uh, don't forget to tune into that because it's a big one. The hardest race ever. What? You say that, well, a lot of people that raced it actually consider it to be one of the hard, well, the hardest e bike race in the world. Steve's been telling us all day about how hard it was. I'm really, I'm really <laughs> excited about it. Even, even though I'm absolutely spent and so tired, yeah. I think I'm still uh, living on adrenaline from the weekend. Honestly. And red wine. Don, it's great to have you on the show. Uh, you haven't been on you for ages. No, it's been a while. It's nice to see your perspective on things e-mountain bike-wise. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you're desperate to get back on your Kinevo. I am going to go out for a ride this weekend, going back to Shropshire, do right. some uphill, you know, shot myself on my Kinevo. Yay! But I'm also interested in your perspective on the bike vault, which the is bike obviously vault. different to how it is on GMBN. Yeah. So take us through it. Right, there's first two bikes, well, it says there's one name, Julie, and they went for a 38 mile ride through North Wales, Flintshire and Denbyshire. What's that? A uh, Canyon Spectral on, and they live in Bolden E. Mm. Couple of good looking bikes, stealthy. Yeah. Going for the. Go on, in Don. Back. Go on, in Don. Looks good to me. Looks good. Go on. Super nice. Super nice. Oh, the next bike is that Cube Stereo from John. That's a good looking bike. They're like in the, yeah. the team, the Enduro team colours, aren't they? I think that I think they're good colours. I do like the colours. I like the background there too. Yeah, Looks a bit autumn-y to that. Is, are you sure that's a current photograph? Yeah, it's looking like one. That's Old Water. In, right. Uh, I'd say that, that that's a that's a shot taken a few months ago. It's a lovely shot. Come on, we want to see up-to-date photographs. Um, this is uh, Matt on his giant Fathom Pro. This is in Victoria. Victoria. Australia. Uh, first ride in the one hill in an otherwise flat regional area. A lot of fun climbing, so much easier than my mate. Do you know what? We, we often uh, give super nices to the mountainous regions of the world, but do you know what? I'm going to give a super nice to Go the on. lowland areas this time. Matt and Victoria, yeah. Ooh. Ooh, Norco. This has got to be North America somewhere. Um, St Stony Trail. What does that say? Uh, this is what? So, Stony Trail, Canas, Alberta, Cana, Kananakskis. 
How dirty. I mean, that, see, for me, that is e-bug territory. Yeah, definitely. Huh? Wild. It's like it's cougar territory and grizzly territory <laughs> as well. So you better you want that bite de-restricted, that's for sure. <laughs> Super nice though, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's this? Merida E160 in... Uh, Rosedale Abbey. Yeah. Not quite sure where that is. Yeah, Richard. Right. Taking it into the wild. It's nice. The UK. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. Oh, another Merida. Ooh, this time in central Otago, New Zealand. Oof. Now you waited for me to come in with a rugby comment, aren't you? <laughs> no, we're not talking about rugby. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, Kynan's bike is back uh, after rehabbing a snapped patella tendon 12 weeks ago. Ooh. Getting out of the bike. Nice one. Yeah. It's got to be a nice. Nice, but this, on the other hand, is in wow. a KTM Machina uh, and is the highest part of the island. What island? Uh, what's that mountain? What island? That mountain looks familiar. Is it's... that Mount Fuji? What island? Doesn't say. Oh, what? Doesn't say. What island is that? It kind of looks... It can't be Fuji. That Maybe... Is that New Zealand? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Whatever island it is, it's a super nice. Or is that Tenerife? No, it's not Tenerife. That's not mine. That's mine tidy. Maybe. There's, there's no fences like that in Tenerife. Gran Canaria. There's a big fire in Grand Canaria this weekend. Did you hear about that? 8,000 square meters on fire. Anyway, moving back to uh, the Swiss area. That's on Switzerland. Uh, Patrick on his Mondraker E Crusher. Uh, yeah, yeah. Valet. Valet. We don't see many of these famous, bikes. Famous wine area, Don. They looked, is it? <laughs> no, all of them. Uh, I remember this bike looking crazy when it came out. Big carbon fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, but you don't see many. Well, you say that, they've got. Um, They've got a more stealthy version of it now, okay. the level R. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that looks good. And actually, Ty, I think uh, Todd Kellett was riding it down that ridiculous FIM race, which you spoiled my day on earlier. <laughs> oh, my I God! Think, I think that's a super nice, to be honest. <laughs> oh. I think they're a bit Marmite, those those e crushers, but I like Yeah, it. okay. Ooh. And finally, this is from Christian, who's in Sikkeborg, Denmark. Is on that Sikkeborg? Yeah, on a Sikkeborg. high bike. Uh, on a, on my favourite trail, Denmark's roof. The trail is very close to the highest point in Denmark and it's a beautiful place to ride. It does. Boom! That's it. It's a super nice. All right. Your photographs coming in. Upload them in the link down below. And uh, we can discuss them and rate them and... Yeah, want to see them, that's for sure. Yeah. So that's it for this week's show. Uh, don't forget if you want to stick with us, uh, have a look at some of the previous videos, particularly the Summit to Sea video, which we recently did, which was a big, big day out. Don, I'm going to take you on that route some point. Let's do it. It's got your name all over it. And you did a bike check with Nico, Nico Videos. Yeah, he's on a, on his carbon bike, painted it himself. Did he? Yeah. Did he that one? Nice. yeah. That's it. So uh, Don, like I said, great to see you. Hope to see you more regularly. Just do. Uh, in the meantime, just thumbs up. Don't forget to hit the dial to subscribe to EMBN.